Okay, part four in this series of creating this logo opener, and uh, we're ready to get to work on the graphics themselves. Looking back at my project here, I want to work on this little bedazzle shape uh, because the overall scale of all of this um, ultimately is going to be uh, driven by this, the replicator here that I used to, uh, the cloner uh, for the shield. So let's go into our new project and switch into modeling mode and i'm in the create panel right now and i'm going to create a cone and this cone will be a static mesh that's great i uh, i don't want so many radial slices i'm going to trick this cone instead of being uh rounded i, I want it just to have four sides so there's just going to be four sides to it and uh, we can leave the radius and this everything else the same, I think. And so oh, there we go. We'll just uh, place that in there and F to uh, frame fit it. Uh, that's good. We'll accept it. There we are. F to frame fit it. Okay. And whoops, we're going away. Oh, right. So um, with motion design on, the the cameras behave a little differently. So if you're used to one way of navigating in the um, viewport in Unreal, uh, this is going to change because it's designed to support the navigation that motion graphics users uh, operate. So I guess technically I don't need to be in motion design mode, so I'll deactivate that for now. And so I can use my uh, camera controls the way I'm used to doing it. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. I'm going to edit this a bit. So I'll go into the uh, mesh processing. And what I want to do is um, I'm going to do triangle edits. And so let me select the peak here and I want to lower this. And what I'm trying to create here, undo, I need to drag select so I get all of those. I want to create kind of this little um, kind of jewel shape and I want it to be double sided and I need to have different materials for different faces. So I've got my overall triangle shape here and let me select these faces. Okay. And I don't need these. These, these would end up being internal. So I'm just going to hit the delete key there. And then I'm going to take these faces and I think I can control D duplicate them and then move that duplicate set down. Nope. Undo. That didn't work. Uh, there should be, oh, there it is. Duplicate. There we go. So control D doesn't work, but we do have a duplicate button and I will spin this around. Bring it around town. Okay. And finally, um, bring these back together, turn off my grid snapping so I can get these really close. I don't want them quite touching. I'm going to, uh, weld these two together. So, uh, to do that, I need to select edges here. So I'm going to select this edge and shift to select this edge and click on weld. And we're just going to work this all the way around and weld and select and shift select and weld. And so now I've got this two-sided uh, tetrahedron kind of thing. So let's uh, go ahead and accept those changes. And finally, I just want to assign multiple materials. Uh, oops, ended up with uh, two of these things. So let's delete one of those. Okay, so I just want to finish up by setting up some materials for this. So I will go into uh, Attribs and Edit Materials. And I need to set up the materials that I'm using. I think this might have been collapsed earlier, but I want to have three different materials on this. And for one side, I want all of these faces. So I'm just clicking on each of these faces here. Okay, so there's one entire side that I want to have uh, one of the automotive uh, car paint materials. So I'll go to my content browser and automotive materials and materials, exterior, car paint. And there's my red material. And I got to drag it over to here. So I'm just going to put this red material here. And if I accept, um, 
Okay, well, actually, I just applied that material to everything. So uh, let's go back into Edit Materials. And th that's fine. I mean, I I've got this whole thing that's red car paint right now. But what I want on the other side is two faces to be a different color and two faces to be glowing. So we'll need two more material slots. So over here in our materials, we'll just hit the plus button a couple times. Uh, one of these I'd like to be this uh, orange car paint. So we'll drop that in there. And we will also get a glow. So we will go into the Visual Studio Kit to get that. Ma nope, not meshes, materials. And glow. And I will, uh, let's use this one. I'll just drag and drop that. Oh. Drag and drop that right there. Okay. So uh, I'll select these two faces right here and select this material by going right here. Now that's selected and I apply that. So now these two are orange and select these two faces. Use this drop down to select the glow and assign that. Okay, so now I can go ahead and accept those changes. Our uh, little gizmo here has red car paint on one side and uh, orange and glow on the other side. Okay, almost a half an hour in and we're ready to start making some motion graphics. So uh, let's switch to motion design mode again. We'll activate that. We're now in motion design mode. I've got my little cone and I will start by creating a cloner for this. Actually, before I start creating anything, let's set up our defaults. So there is a handy little button here in a toolbar that got added by our motion design button. We're going to create defaults. This is going to give us uh, a basic light and a camera, right? So there's a, a scene route, uh, directional light, skylight, post-process volume, and city camera. So I'm going to accept all of that and spawn those. And now we've got a default scene here in our motion design outliner. And we are now looking through that cine camera. And I can uh, toggle in and out of this, by the way, with my mouse in the viewport. I can hit the C key and that takes me back to my perspective view. And if I hit the C key again, I'm jumping back to my camera view. So that, that's really handy. Okay, uh, this also gives me a light. So in theory, I can switch from unlit to lit mode now. And now we can start to see our uh, light and uh, select this and tap F to frame that up. Okay, and there we go. We've got some reflections going thanks to the skylight. There's that camera. And I actually tend to like initializing this in a different location than the default. So the default scene usually starts out, if I go to details, at negative 500 and 250. I'm going to set this to 000. And I'm also going to set the camera to start out at 000. Now, by default, this camera is locked down. So I'm going to unlock it so that I can move it and make sure this is also at 000. And we'll edit the camera some more later. So for now, I'll just lock that in. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is create a cloner for this so that we can start uh, creating like a field of these little bedazzle things. So I will go into our uh, actor panel here and say that I want to create a cloner. And I'll just click in the middle here. Now, one of the things that the motion design mode does is whenever an actor is created, it's always facing directly at the camera that uh, is viewing the viewport. So this has been positioned in such a way, if I uh, select that cloner, that all of these rotations are designed to be facing the camera. So I'm going to um, relocate this to 000 and get rid of my rotation 000. And I want this to be in a grid layout. I just want one um, level of this. And if I expand the cloner in the uh, motion design outliner, we have this default cube. And instead I want to add the cone that I'd created. So I'm going to drag and drop that into the cloner. And you'll see we're getting alternates now uh, between the two models. And I will take this default cube and delete it. And yes, we do want to delete this. And for some reason, I'm not getting my lit. There we go. It took a little moment there. So now we're starting to see um, the uh, this uh, field of bedazzles coming together. Uh, while I'm at this, I'm just going to hit 
my five unsaved and save selected so that uh, we've just saved everything in our project in case, uh, you know, experimental features come uh, and bite us. So um, I don't want this checkerboard kind of look. I really want these all pressing against one another. So I'm going to take the cone and it looks like I just need to rotate it. So E, I'm just going to rotate it about 45 degrees. So this way, and let me just enter in 45. And so now in the cloner, I can adjust the spacing in X and Y. So let's just bring this spacing together and we'll bring this spacing together and let's just round that out to 70 and 70. Okay, so this is only three and three. So let's try like 50 and 50 and uh, move back here. That, that ought to be enough. That, that, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and uh, save everything right now. And in the next video, we'll make a shield frame for all of this and uh, start building out some more of the pieces. Until next time, have fun.